Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the 6.5 Summit. Daniel Newman here, CEO of the Futurum Group. It's day two. We are in the semiconductor track. I am very excited to introduce our next guest. I got Sassine Ghazi. Sassine is the CEO of Synopsis, someone I've gotten to know well over the past several months as he took the helm of the company and someone I believe has a lot to share about what's going on in AI, pervasive intelligence, in the future of silicon development, and so much more. Sassine, welcome back to the 6.5. Welcome to the show. So excited to have you here. Great to be here, Daniel. Great to be here. Yeah, it's a really interesting time right now. Things are moving very, very quickly. I attended your investor day pretty pretty recently, probably a few months ago now. It's crazy how fast time is going. Um, but I've been tracking the company, watching closely. You've been buying and making big deals. You've been selling off parts of the business that have been uh, seen as not in the focus area that you want to build around. Uh, you've seen tons of demand and interest as AI and data centers scale. Look, it feels like there's never been a better time to be in semis. I mean, I just hit on the demand, um, the need for IP, the doors have opened up for so many new companies to participate. Um, you know, you've got a new national holiday every quarter called NVIDIA Earnings Day. You know, look, you're the guest of honor. What are you seeing? Kind of, it seems like it's just a great time to be in this space. Daniel, it's such an exciting time to be in our industry. I mean, AI is absolutely a mega driver to big changes that are happening. If you look at the infrastructure build out that is taking place and that insatiable demand and need for more compute, high performance, low power in order to power up all these AI applications. And now you're seeing a uh, number of companies that are making investments, not only from an infrastructure uh, training point of view, but AI on the edge, doing both training and inferencing on the edge. And that does not happen without advanced, sophisticated silicon. And as you know, with our design uh, solution, both for uh, design automation and design IP, that sophisticated silicon will not be taking place as our customers actually describe us, not us describing ourselves, as the, we are mission critical for their success in this era of pervasive intelligence uh, that is driving silicon proliferation everywhere. Yeah, you really do. I mean, you know, with, without saying it, I mean, you tend to have a pulse. You tend to have a very strong indicator of the industry and where it's at because of the interactions you have. I mean, look, the design of chips, I mean, some of the things you're doing with generative technologies, but even before just the partnering that you do and and the the speed of innovation and the cycle times, you know, we heard recently about going to one year cycles on the big GPUs and like right. that, that means work for your team. That's going to meaningfully increase what you have to do, right? To keep that moving forward. No, exactly. See, we see things from two, two, two angles. The one is a leading indicator from markets. So if you look at an automotive or an industrial or a data center, hyperscale, et cetera, we see at least two to three years ahead of time, what are the big R&D investments our customers are making and what are the things they're excited about in terms of their next product? So we see it very early because we enable their R&D as they develop these products. The other angle that uh, we see is from a technology point of view. You know, all that silicon has to be manufactured on a certain technology. And we're the bridge between manufacturing and design. And as you know right now, that design is changing. When you start uh, the redefining the way the chip is being designed in order to jam as many of these transistors into a monolithic or a multi-die. The complexity is unbelievable, but the only way that our customers are able to achieve it and bridge between the manufacturing readiness and the architecture aspiration they have is through the design automation and the design IP that we provide. Yeah, I think when, all, when you see a lot of the sort of memes floating around about, you know, buy shovels, you know, yeah, are, yeah. you know where the goal is, well, you could truly say that Synopsys is a very important shovel in terms of digging out all this AI opportunity. And it's been very exciting to watch. And, and, and you know, that's why I've been 
very positive in my, my commentary is the numbers have been there, but also the technology that's been required to speed these cycles up, speed innovation, democratize the access to AI. I want to I want to pivot a little bit with you, though. We've had a few conversations. We had the chance to meet in person. One of these days, we'll do this in person. We've had the chance to have you on the record with me before. But for my audience out there, you, you know, you've been it, you said 28 years, so you're not new. You don't look a day over 27, <laughs> so to your credit, but like you're five months now into this role as CEO of Synopsis. Talk a little bit about your first five months. You know, it's been such an exciting five months and uh, exciting given the what's happening around us uh, as an industry. And as you know, and you and I, as you said, have talked about it a few times, uh, stepping into the role, we made a couple strategic decisions. One is to sell off uh, and carve out part of the business and really double down on the core. So we had a business in software security, which is roughly 10% of the company's revenue. Uh, we're in the process, actually, we have a buyer, we're in the process of carving it out. The, at the same time, we made a very strategic decision as we look at the world moving forward from what we call silicon to systems, and we can double click into it. Uh, we made the decision to acquire Ansys, which is a company we've had a partnership with them since 2017. So about seven years partnership, and we want to take, take that partner, partnership to the next level in order to drive it truly uh, a pathway for our customers as they, they themselves are trying to serve their customer at the system level. Uh, so, so those are in the last five months, big strategic decisions, while of course, delivering on the current commitment we have for our investors. Uh, and as you've seen, we, uh, uh, as we reported Q2, uh, we raised the year again because we see nice momentum for our business. Yeah. And, and, and look, you know, there's no better indicator right now. Like I always say the the current quarter matters to me only if the guide is bad. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I always say that. Yeah, great result. But like, if the guide is bad, doesn't matter. it doesn't matter. It does that's not right. Matter. It does not matter. Now, um, you know, besides those numbers, though, I think, like you said, you're just in the front end of so many of the important trends of where we're heading. And this AI trend is just so important. There's, there is an exuberance about it, see. I mean, there's an exuberance around AI. You know, I've been asked a few times, is this the biggest front load in history in terms of the buying? And I think there is, but the time between a front load and an infrastructure build out and when we will get to value, everybody knows how short it's going to be that even if that is true, it will be true for such a short period of time that I don't think it matters. I, 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 I agree. That's why I said in the beginning, it feels like it's a gradual, then all of a sudden that you see that steep inflection point and it doesn't matter. I agree. Yeah. What do they say? It's uh, slow at first, then all at once is the That's added, right. That's uh, right. Yes, say, yes, so. yes, 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 um, yes. And by the way, slow now isn't actually all that slow. No, 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 no. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about what's going to drive your next wave of growth. Because clearly you're not a secret anymore. You're tying up with another player that that meaningfully expands your capacity to do what you're doing and do more for your customers to get them right to market faster. How do you capitalize on this? And then how do you continue to expand TAM? Everybody wants more TAM. They want more growth. You're right, going to have to right. find more. You know, the, the, the best way to make big bets is to be centered around what are the customer requirements and how are they changing. If you listen to the big semiconductor companies, they're all describing themselves as I'm not a chip supplier, I'm a system, I'm providing a solution to my customer. You talk to their customers, they're truly trying to define the electronics and in some cases, they're designing their own chips. In many cases, they're not. But why is it becoming more and more uh, important? It, the content of electronics in every system and system, be it a data center or a car or an industrial application, is only going higher and higher. And when you have electronics going higher in terms of content, they require two things. How do I develop my software early to define my application? And does it match what I have in terms of silicon and chips? If you're a chip company, you're trying to customize and deliver a solution for a specific workload and specific end system. If you're a system company, 
you're trying to define your system architecture and determine which chip you need in terms of uh, delivering the most effective and efficient, be it performance, be it power uh, in a car, uh, mileage uh, per charge, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and this is where we find ourselves as a company that at the system level, at the software definition level, we have solution that our customer can virtualize the electronics and build the software early. And at the silicon level, we do everything in terms of IP and design automation. And the quick nugget here, and I know you and I have discussed it before, but seven, eight years ago, Synopsys was about 90% of our revenue coming from the chip guys. Now it's 55-45, 55% of our revenue coming from semiconductor, 45% coming from system companies, just to tell you how the trend shifted. So when we made the decision to take the partnership from Ensys from a partnership to a, an acquisition is to drive the solution from silicon to systems. Well, you've heard me say it a few times. I almost feel like you're leading the witness and making this too easy for me. So, because the next question I was going to ask is about the semiconductor ecosystem. Um, you know, again, I don't know who a silic I don't know who semiconductor companies are anymore. And, yes, I, and I mean this as an analyst that's watched this industry for a long time, comments on it regularly, and is you know regularly sought for my opinion about it. I mean, is Microsoft a chip company? Is that's right. is Amazon a chip company? Is Meta a chip company? Um, because technically, you know, in the world of fabulous, um, which w if you consider NVIDIA a chip company or you consider AMD a chip company, why would Microsoft, you know what I mean? They happen to do many other things. That's right. But now That's they right. design in partnership with companies like you and companies um, like ARM and companies like Broadcom and others. I mean, they don't do That's it right. on their own, but most don't. And that's, that's the, right. the, 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 there's only very few. I mean, heck, even Intel uses TSMC for some, some things. So there is almost nothing out there that is a pure end to end play. We do nothing but chips anymore. So it, it, what is the semiconductor ecosystem? What do you see? What does it look like in the future? How is it going to evolve? No, no, actually, it's, it's, uh, believe it or not, when I described the 55% coming from traditional semiconductor yeah. and 45% from systems. The best way for me to describe it, those system companies, even though they're designing their chips, like the Microsoft example you gave, yeah. they're not selling the chips to the outside, meaning they're designing working. the chip for their own consumption and their own workload. And semiconductor chip companies, they're selling the chip for many system companies. Yeah. Now, th you're right. But they do sell it in the cloud as other people consume it. That, that, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. It, it, no, no, exactly, exactly. So when a Microsoft or an AWS or a Google and other are developing silicon, is they're developing it for their own workload, but they're offering it uh, in terms of that workload from an effectiveness, efficiency point of view to their cloud uh, customers. Uh, now you... We're talking so far about hyperscale compute, right? And AI training, et cetera. But if you zoom out and you look at other markets, automotive is actually a good example. Uh, even though you, you see right now the shifting to the right in terms of uh, electrification, but there is no shift to the right in terms of um, having an, a, a more advanced ADAS system having a more advanced uh, infotainment and the connected uh, and advanced electronics in the car. So that demand uh, in terms of having a car being connected and taking advantage of AI, be it on the edge and or through a uh, data center, is, is another uh, um, opportunity, but another way for, in this case, the automotive OEMs to rethink what is their role what is a car of the future? Where are they making that investment? And this is where it's creating an opportunity for a company like Synopsys that we did not have before. We did not talk to automotive OEMs in the past. Yeah, well, I think you will be talking to them quite a bit more. I mean, look, you know, we're, we're about out of time here, Sassine, but uh, I think what you've seen Elon Musk do at Tesla, and of course not without help from partners. I mean, what we've seen 
you know, companies like Qualcomm do to build that design pipeline has shown that the uh, the car is an edge device and it is exactly. going to be a software defined, silicon driven. I mean, look, you should have called this session silicon or semiconductors will eat the world. In 2019, I wrote that as my 10 predictions for 2020 before the pandemic. <laughs> I said, 2020 silicon will eat the world. Um, and so I didn't realize there would be such a unfortunate circumstance that would accelerate that to see right right but right there's been no turning back meaning no, no. we we rediscovered and now by the way it's cool to be a chip guy again so you can put that cool coat on and wear it out and you know the rock music is going to follow you right down <laughs> uh, you know right down the streets of palo alto and, and throughout sand hill road so i really no, appreciate it, you you it, no, no, it, exactly it's such a great time to be in our industry and daniel great to see you as always <laughs> yeah so see we'll do it again soon i'm absolutely sure of it keep keep doing great things and keep inspiring the industry that's the scene gazi ceo of synopsis joining us here six five summit day two stay with us for more covers semiconductors chips are cool folks lots of great sessions here i'm going to send it back to the studio